And welcome to the start of another portrait painting in the virtual painting session. So I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I want to start off by saying that the photo reference that you're seeing there in the top left corner of your screen has been, there's a link to this picture posted in the community section of my YouTube channel. Yes, I finally remembered to post the link to the community section of my YouTube channel channel. So we're going to start off um, in the Alla Prima style, the Alla Prima fashion. Uh, so I hope everyone is uh, doing well here. Also, it is uh, Cyber Monday, so I do have a Cyber Monday sale going on. I'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, I have posted the uh, link and pinned it to the Cyber Monday sale. I will take the sale out when the stream ends. Um, if it if it doesn't sell, of course, if we don't make the sale for the Cyber Monday sale, but I'll talk about that later. So right now, with the composition, I'm trying to get an idea of the placement of everything. The panel that I'm using is the same type of panel that you've seen me use last time, which is a panel that I prepared by gessoing uh, on my own, so started off with just raw uh, wood, I believe it's uh, birch wood, uh, and several layers, I think about five layers of Liquitex Professional Acrylic Gesso, uh, sanding in between layers to let some of the wood grain show, and then ultimately toning it with raw umber oil paint and then letting it dry. So, um, hey Harjot, um, oh yeah, yeah Harjot, please, uh, I think we did figure out who the person was that we were talking with on Twitch, Harjot, but please do not, don't post, um, post his name because he wanted to be anonymous. Even though we figured out who he was, uh, we, we shouldn't, you know, post it because he wanted to be anonymous. So, um, in, in any case, this one is going to be the first of the virtual painting sessions to include a hand. So yes, I do want to include a hand in here. And um, if you're wondering what I was just talking about with Harjot, um, I also have a Twitch account. So I have started streaming on Twitch. And we had one of the most, uh, I want to say most educational conversations um, in a long time really on any streaming or whatever platform with a viewer. So we had a viewer, um, like kind of basically a celebrity guest uh, show up in my Twitch stream, which was awesome. Um, and that video is available for everyone to watch uh, on Twitch. So if you want to check out the Twitch, um, again, we had a we had a celebrity guest uh, drop in, let's just say that, let's just put it that way. We had a celebrity guest uh, drop in in the Twitch stream. So, um, let's see, what have I missed? I'm pretty sure you're right, Harjot. Again, I have no way to prove it, but I'm pretty sure you're right. Um, so, everyone that's, that's watching right now with the start. Hey, Dr. Uh, Harris. Um, everyone that's watching with the start. I want you to, to know that this is not intended to be 100% like the photo reference. And there's various different schools of thought on exactly how to start or, or what to what to look for when you're when you're starting I just look for basic shape now obviously I'm putting a lot more attention right now on the hand because I want to be able to crop it so that the elbow is not showing right on the edge so that's why I'm paying a lot more attention to this edge there's gonna be a strong um, Kind of beam of light over here by the clavicles so I have to make sure that I get all of these tilts as accurate as I uh, possibly can. So hey Mariah, hey Kathy. So as always please feel free to ask me questions while I'm drawing just know that um, if there are a lot of questions and may be difficult for me to respond um, quickly so you may have to type the question uh, again if I miss um, your question so I apologize in advance um, when and if I do 
miss anyone's messages. I'm just using a, a raw umber to draw. I decided not to use the alkyd raw umber to draw, but I'm going to switch to the alkyds when I get into the color. Um, and we are going to have a Ella Prima type start with this painting because that's what kind of helps me to move a little faster with my painting uh, process. And it's pretty loose and abstract. Uh, the tilt is not going to be, I don't want to say it's, it's not going to be exactly the way that you're seeing it there, but I'm trying to I'm trying to get after a gesture. I'm trying to go after a gesture here. A nice dynamic movement uh, to the painting. Edward. Uh, oh yeah, yeah definitely. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, let's see. Hey Marshall, yep, I have posted that photo reference um, in the community section. So if you go to my YouTube channel and look up the community section on my YouTube channel, the link is there. So just don't click on the gray box. Uh, the gray box, I don't know why that gray box shows up. Um, I even put in text to ignore the gray box. I don't know why it shows up, but... In any case, this, is, uh, this image is from Unsplash, copyright free... Uh, place where you can find excellent photo references to use. Hey Li, uh, Lilu, is your board primed? Are you painting on dry? Uh, this is a, pr yep, yeah, I primed this, uh, I toned it. I primed it with acrylic, uh, Liquitex Professional acrylic gesso over several days and then once the gesso, all, once the gesso dried, um, I then toned it with raw umber. So this is toned. Hey Bridget, welcome, welcome everyone. So um, in the first, in the in the starting video or stream, we'll, we'll call it of any of these portrait paintings, there will probably be a time when I'm going to have to pause um, and put a hundred percent focus on the painting. So just to let you know. Uh, the start is always the most difficult time uh, to to get everything placed, um, especially when you're doing a live uh, painting demonstration. So what I'm going to do is I'll let you know. So right now, for instance, I am looking at the at the comments, but I'll let you know when all of my attention goes to the painting. And I'm going to start going into masses. Uh, now with the uh, larger brush. Hey Matt K, uh, I have a lot of trouble with my portraits looking cross-eyed. When I finish them, I don't know if other people see it or not. Any tips? Um, hey got so I'm glad you liked the, the photo reference. Um, so for that, for the orientation of the face, I would suggest um, I would suggest to look at the distance between the sclera and the tear ducts and to make sure that that matches uh, on each side but I can talk a little bit more about that when we do get into specifics. Now remember everyone please check out uh, if you like what you're seeing here please check out uh, the online classes that I have on on Patreon. Remember these aren't intended to be lessons these are more or less um, informative painting sessions. So I'm going for shapes, and like I always say, I start from really wrong to less wrong. So right now it's going to be really wrong. Uh, it's going to appear like like madness for some time, and I may be pushing everything around. Um, right now I'm just trying to get an idea of, of the composition that I like. I, I want a composition that I like because this is a painting that is going to be continued on Wednesday and finished. Uh, if all things go well, on Saturday. So I have to be very cautious with the composition. 
none of it is going to be exact and I don't care about any of that at the moment what I'm focused on is placement and I uh, usually don't recommend this approach actually um, for for uh, beginners so for instance with the online classes I always recommend my students start with project 2 uh, which involves the full transfer drawing process. Hey Steven, oh, I'm glad that you got the lit in yellow. Alright, so let's see, we got a question from Dr. Harris. Hey party, can I use uh, the mud of oil paint inside the spirit jar? No, 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 I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't reuse the, the, um, what you get out of the mineral spirit jar. I, w I wouldn't reuse it. Um, but I, I should continue to read the question. Uh, I've seen some artists use it to tone down the canvas, but I doubt the integrity of you. Or, Bindability. Uh, you are correct. I, I wouldn't do that. Um, definitely wouldn't do that. Um, hey Paul, yes you can do an acrylic underpainting and then go over it with oil paint. Yes, you can do that. And right now I'm just pushing the shapes with an eraser brush. Uh, like I said, I do not care about the specifics. Uh, I, I don't care about the details uh, right now. That's not what I'm focused on. What I'm focused on right now is, as I said before, placement. And yes, I used a little bit of the solvent. As you're seeing, it's starting to drip there because this panel is actually pretty smooth. Because I did sand it in between. So I'm kind of moving the, the face outwards a little bit. I want to make sure that the negative space is something that I, I like compositionally. I may want to make the head a little bigger. So I'm going to move this up. And maybe we'll have some of the hair actually meet the edge of the panel. So again, like I was saying, everything here is movable. It's versatile. It's it's not something that, you know, I'm going to make a mark and then not move it and then measure everything. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with measuring, but I like to have a kind of a free approach when I'm working because it's it's more fun for me to work this way. Here's the bottom of the chin. So again, I'm going to grow the size of the face a little bit. Because I want this to go a little higher. I think compositionally it's not working out. So I'm going to move this up and then we're going to grow that section. Right now, composition is everything. I'm only interested in, in shapes. And I'm going to use a little bit of paper towel to eliminate the excess, the excess solvent. Hey MC Hugh, um, what did you mix with the raw umber during your initial? Uh, it's just Gamsol, which is why it, it feels like the 
paint is kind of slipping around a little too much. The Gamsol, it, it kind of eats at the paint. Uh, it feels like it eats at the paint a little bit. So a little bit goes a long way with that. And I'm, I'm a little happier with the size of the head now. Compositionally, um, I think this will work better, the proportions that we have now. Obviously, this has to be adjusted. But all of this has to be adjusted now. The hand is going to move completely. Oh yeah, it's definitely very fluid. A uh, question from Paul John. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, oh yes, I think I answered this one. Yes, you can use uh, acrylic in the beginning and then uh, put oil paint over it. Uh, why is this my favorite brush? This is my favorite brush because um, this is my favorite brush because it not only does it last forever but it adds paint without kind of shoveling it around sometimes um, larger brushes can feel like they're shoveling the paint around especially larger bristle brushes uh, let's see uh, hey Lou, uh, Louis why don't you paint from a live model? Uh, I'm actually currently working on a large format painting um, from life. My fiance is posing for me. Um, but I'm not going to stream it because it's like uh, I'm building it specifically for my portfolio for official portrait commissions. Um, for these virtual painting sessions, I would love to paint a uh, live model, but you know the whole pandemic thing. It's a little hard to well it's impossible really to to schedule live painting sessions these days especially over here where everything is really bad uh, especially in Maryland now if I could paint um, from life I would for this Hey Doreen, welcome back. Okay, I'm glad you like the subject matter. What happened here? Oh yeah, sorry about that Steve. I don't know why hard shot. <laughs> he said he dropped his phone. So this is uh, going to require a lot more work from me in the, um, in the drawing. And I'm going to have to be a lot more abstract for a, lo a lot longer. Simply because the, there's going to be a little bit more anatomy involved in this. So again, grab yourself... Uh, some tea, uh, put on some relaxing music. Uh, this is definitely going to be a little bit more slow paced than the previous starts because this is a little more than a head and shoulders. And once we have everyone, or at least uh, a few more people here, I'll introduce the Cyber Monday sale that I have going on. But you can already um, have an advantage over everyone else if you click on the, the link that I have to my Etsy. I've already put it on the, I've pinned it for you. Hey Michael, I just wanted to say this is a lot of fun to watch. So sad that it's late here in the UK. So Michael, I had just streamed, um, I streamed from 2 p.m 
uh, to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, so just uh, an hour, really, <laughs> just about an hour before I started this, I was streaming on Twitch. So I also stream on Twitch, um, uh, mainly drawing. So if anyone, you know, if this is too late um, during your time zone, in your time zone, if it's too late, please check out the Twitch. Or if you're interested in more streaming content from me, please check out the Twitch. Please help me get to 100 followers and at least one subscriber on Twitch. I don't think I have a single subscriber. I just learned that you can have subscribers on there. Oh, we have a hundred. Okay, so I think we have... Um, a good number of people here now. So let me change camera angles and tell you first what the uh, Cyber Monday sale is. It is only during this stream that I will have this sale. So the sale is actually a special where you can purchase two of my paintings at the same time. So I have two paintings available for the Cyber Monday sale. Two paintings that are listed on Etsy. So this one, Crescent Moon, that was painted a couple of virtual painting sessions ago. And we have Best Friends. These are two original oil paintings that you can buy tonight at a price that will save you a total of $155. So here is the, the um, screenshot. So again, this is for two paintings, the pa two paintings I showed you. First come, first serve, of course, for 355 which, if you do the math for the price of each of them, costs, it saves you $155 um, if you purchase during this live stream. But only during this live stream. Again, that price gets you two original oil paintings of mine that were created in virtual painting sessions. So you can start your art collecting tonight. So uh, remember, it's a first come, first serve basis. And of course, if it doesn't, if it doesn't sell, then I'll just, uh, of course, take off the um, sale and the paintings will still be available of course at their regular price um, one each one at a time that is all right so let me take a look at the wrist um, the, I, when I draw a hand I think about the position of the wrist bone and then gauge everything surrounding it And that's funny, you're noticing I'm not even, I'm not really that concerned about the face um, in this, in this portrait painting. The main focus here is getting the, um, the proportions correct using abstract shapes. Oh, thanks for posting the Twitch there. And again, the Twitch is every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, just like YouTube, but instead it's 2 p.m., 2 o'clock p.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Actually, this, this Twitch stream, this recent one, went a little bit longer, which is why I, I kind of couldn't find my drawing brush in the beginning of this stream. Um, but usually 2 o'clock p.m. to 4 o'clock p.m., Sometimes I, I go a little bit over that time frame, but um, of course, since I'm, I stream on YouTube so close to when it ends, I usually will only make it to two hours. Hey DD, have you considered doing auctions of your work that say would last two weeks with reserve bid? set by you. 
Uh, Ginger uh, Cook does that with her work regular, and she does YouTube painting videos. Um, I haven't thought of that, but I can I can look into that. Hey John, I was taught to paint at university. I was taught to do background, middle ground, foreground, then highlights. Uh, similar kind of mindset here, just um, you know, working uh, general to specific. So general to specific means working really wrong to less wrong. Either way, it's always going to be somewhat wrong because I'm not trying to make a perfect photocopy of what I'm looking at. But the portrait painting is a, a very challenging thing because of portrait drawing. And I'm telling you, the hardest part about portrait painting is portrait drawing. So the more time you spend practicing your drawing, the, the better your painting will become. And I think that this distance here for the wrist should be about good. So I, I have a little less to worry about here other than the the width of the radius ulna. That should be about good. Now I should be able to block in the um, the face. Hey Luke, um, I'm from the Netherlands. What about yourself? I am from Beltsville, Maryland. Um, good old PG County, uh, Beltsville, Maryland. I live about uh, around 30 minutes or so away from DC. So if you live near DC and you ever want to meet up, um, do like a meet and greet or something, after the pandemic is over, we can do that. Now, this is a little too round. Now I can start to put in a few more straight lines and angles. The clavicle is here. I need to look at the angle of the chin. So it's something like this. So very simple, light and dark patterns. Let's see. I'm trying to see if I missed anything. AKJ. Uh, Oh, you asked uh, the other person. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Alright, so let me do a quick double check. So, I always recommend that you stand back to make sure that your angles are correct. And I, I believe that the angles are correct. Again, I... um. I can't quite stand back because I have this chair here, so I'm going to sit back and see um, the angle. So having this kind of simplification of the shape, as you're seeing here, you can do like a almost like a one-on-one -on -one comparison with the, the photograph. So the shape is is I think it's there now. Um, I'm telling you, this right here was way more difficult to block in because of this hand uh, trying to get this hand to fit in the composition and this is going to have that glowing effect right here we're going to palette knife the daylights out of the the light here we're going to have these nice um, these skin tones these uh, middle values and keep it really really luminous But of course, I need a little bit more for the back of the hair. All right, 
right, so please remember, let's try to keep the, the chat or the dialogue in the chat um, as art related as we can, but uh, little personal questions are good too. A little bit more raw umber. And I'm using the non alkyd raw umber uh, just because I knew, I knew when I started this, uh, I knew even before I started this how difficult this, this stage, the envelope, was going to be. So I knew that it would take me way longer with these shapes than usual. And it's taken me like what, 30 minutes now? Over 30 minutes to get the envelope as accurate as I can before moving forward. Now right now she kind of, the hair kind of looks like Super Saiyan 3, um, but that's perfectly fine. You know, I'm going to leave it, leave it be, and then we're going to go in with palette knife, and we're going to add more details and all that stuff later. But this, this is good now. Um, Let's see. Hey Matt K, can you explain why you would varnish a painting as opposed to just leaving it unvarnished? The varnish just helps to protect the painting um, over time. So um, if you don't varnish it, that doesn't mean that your painting won't last for centuries. Um, it just means that it's it's going to be missing that extra layer of protection. It's just a protective coat. Hey Steven, uh, let's see, bye, or did you choose this particular photo of the model and not one of the others? Um, I chose this one because of the hand, uh, the turn of the head, so I like the shoulders are turned, the head is turned, so for the pose and for the rim lighting, because I've been doing the rim lighting uh, setups a lot. I really like the lighting. And um, the awkward stage, we will get to the awkward stage soon, once we start to block in stuff for the face. Oh yeah, um, this is her pointer finger. Her thumb is over here, barely visible. So since her thumb is barely visible, I'm didn't really put it in there yet. Hey Jeff, uh, do you spend time at the museums in DC? Oh yeah, before the pandemic hit I was always going to the museums, uh, the National Gallery of Art in DC, definitely. Okay, so let's see if we can do this again. So I'm going to use the thirds, well that angle is off, but I'm going to use the thirds to help me with the placement of the features. I should just use the paper towel for this. Now remember, this is a little different for me uh, than what you're seeing, and I almost have to look at the screen. I almost have to look at this at, um, at my screen to see what you're seeing. So the uh, thirds that I mentioned was the hairline eyebrow should equal roughly down to where the nose is. So I'm just going to use my hands instead um, because I don't feel like 
looking for my caliper at the moment, so there. That'll give me roughly where the bottom of the nose is going to be. And everything is going to move. And everything is going to be, again, very out of place. It's going to seem out of place for some time until we eventually get to the specific shapes. Hey, uh, Sun Guru, no worries. Hey, David, um, oh yes, thanks for answering, uh, David's question for me, Monique, thank you, thank you. Hey, Michael, um, oh, you're responding to, to Mariah, good, good. Um, I want to say that this right here is the most fun but difficult part in the painting. Fun because everything is so uh, move uh, malleable, it's so easily moved. Um, everything is brand new. Uh, it's a new adventure really. But it's difficult in that you're starting with nothing. There's nothing here. Uh, and you're reasoning with shapes and you're trying to you're trying to use the shapes in such a way that it emulates the beauty, the magnificence of what it's like to observe something in nature. There is no point in this painting process that I'm telling myself what makes this like a photograph. There's no point for me to recreate what a machine has been physically designed to do. So I'm a human, I'm not a camera. So I understand and accept that what I'm going to put down is going to look different. But I'm okay with that. You know, I'm trying to make my own image. That being said, like I said, the awkward stage is real. So, we'll get there. Don't worry. Hey, Power, Courage, and Wisdom. On a 15-minute break. I'm on a 15-minute break. Uh, thanks for joining. Let's see. Hey, Luke. How did you find your favorite paint for each specific color from all these different brands? Um, for drawing, I must say, I almost always like to use raw umber just because it's it's warm but it's not quite as warm or red as um, uh, burnt umber and I've been told that my colors could be a little bit cooler in general so I'm gonna see if I can incorporate that advice when we get into color. Hey, a tool. So I'm looking at the distance between the, uh, the bottom of the nose and the top middle portion of the upper lip. So if I can get this distance to work in relation to everything. So remember, everything is in relations. And if I, I can get that to work, then I'm in a good position. And again, details are nothing. I'm not worried about the details. Hey Steven, all my stages are awkward. <laughs> I can say the same with me too, sometimes. Hey Michael, I'm sure this was talked about earlier, but what canvas type is uh, is this and what influences your decision on canvas types? This is a wooden panel that I prepared on my own. Uh, I didn't cut it, but this is, a, uh, as you're seeing here, just a raw wooden panel. 
that I gessoed uh, for several days. I, I believe it has about five layers of gesso um, in total. And um, then I toned it with raw umber. Hey Mad West, is the measurement of the forehead to the nose the same as the nose to the chin? Honestly, I didn't I didn't measure it on her first. It just appeared to me that they were the same. And if they look to be about the same, that's just that's usually how I will paint it. But you can always check if you want to run uh, a quick measurement. Now this again is not these are basically uh, what I call like stand-ins for everything. So the details in here are not meant to be the correct details. None of it except for the placement uh, is what none of it is correct except for the placement of the head. And even that is always put into scrutiny. And I have to be careful not to draw too much because that's a that's going to be something that will make me spend a lot of time if I draw end up drawing too much. And this is just a piece of paper towel. I would say that the distance from the um, the bottom of the lips to the chin is definitely shorter than this. So I've got a lot of things to move. And then we will add the color. So her mouth is slightly open, so let's see if I can gesture that in there. Now let's fix the chin. We're going to do a chin up. And of course, this all of this is all completely wrong, and I accept it. But uh, you have to start wrong in order to correct. Uh, you can't just start correct unless you, I don't know, like trace the photograph or something. But even then, I mean, that's I don't know, that's not fun for me. And there's nothing wrong with tracing if you want to skip all this and then just trace. To each their own. I find this fun. Um, sometimes trying to do this quickly is where it becomes stressful. But if you give yourself the time to pursue accuracy, you'll find that it's a very calm and meditative thing.
let's see, power, courage, and wisdom. What kind of grounds do you use? Um, the grounds that I, I like to use wooden panels for the most part. Uh, I also like aluminum panels. But for larger format paintings, um, I tend to use uh, linen. So uh, I actually ordered a, uh, a huge roll of uh, double oil primed linen fine texture. I won't be using it for these streams though, I'll be using it for um, future uh, official com portrait commissions. Okay, so now, what I notice is that she has a heart, like kind of like a heart-shaped head. So I'm going to start to go in and draw more of kind of like that heart-shaped head that I'm seeing in the reference there. And so again, if you are interested in purchasing two of my oil paintings at the same time and saving a total of $155 in your purchase, uh, please check out my Cyber Monday sale that I have going on only during this stream. Hey Stefan! Uh, what do you think of projectors in terms of learning tool to help with layout, composition, and color matching? Um, uh, let's see if, if you're a complete novice. Uh, so remember, there is nothing wrong with using a projector or for uh, tracing or anything like that. Um, and in fact, many artists will say that there's no such thing as, as well, let's backtrack a little bit. Someone may say, if you decide, hey, I want to use a projector, hey, I want to transfer the outlines from the photograph, and then the other artist, like the purist, will, in the background, hmm, you're going to use a transfer? You're going to use a projector? You can't draw. And then you're like, but it's just the outlines. And then the other person, you can't draw. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say that use whatever tools that you want to use at your disposal because ultimately it's your artwork so it's your artwork and you can do whatever you want with your artwork now in terms of a projector you can use a projector as long as you're careful that the projector itself doesn't distort the image that you're trying to paint so that that's the only stipulation I would say with projectors hey DD I read uh, from an artist that used masonite boards from clipboards to paint on. Removing the clip, they were um, readily available and super affordable. Yeah, although drawing boards here aren't really that, uh, uh, they're not that cheap over here. Okay, all right, so well, now back to this. I noticed that she has kind of like the almost like a heart shaped head here so I'm also noticing that her the distance between her eyes is a little bit wider than what I've I'm used to I think that should be a good scaffolding basically for the color. And I did draw a little more this time. 
than before. Again, pretty much an hour was spent with just drawing of the um, of the big shapes. So now let's take that out. Now let's get some color in the mix, um, literally. So what I'm gonna do is put the colors on the palette uh, because these are, these colors have been here since the morning, so they might be starting to dry. So this one's still kind of usable. Uh, but I'm going to top off the uh, the paints here. Hey, um, Sunger, I'm glad that uh, this motivates you. This is Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Um, yellow Ochre. Winsor. We'll put the Winsor Red soon. These are all alkids. Um, I've read, at least my, from what I've read, alkid is a very, um, it's a very archival material to use. Um, I've heard otherwise now, uh, recently, with uh, alkids and fast dryers in particular. But the one thing to note uh, is that I'm not going to be using medium, any extra medium in this painting. The alkyd oil paints have alkyd infused in the paint. So it's a uniform, uniform, it's a homogeneous mixture of alkyd and, um, and paint. So, and pigment, should I say, and the oil. So, as long as your first layer is the fastest drying layer of them all, you should be fine. And since alkyd's dry with the quickness. I don't have any concerns with the drying time. Okay, so remember, please keep the uh, the chat as a, as a viewer friendly as possible. Also, if anyone finds these uh, streams to be kind of chaotic, uh, that's that's actually a fun thing. I don't know. I like when, you know, there's there's all this commotion and stuff. Um, but if you find yourself wanting to communicate with me more, um, then definitely check out the Twitch. Uh, again, with Twitch, I don't have a single subscriber. I have, I think, uh, 40 followers, but not a single subscriber on Twitch. So the, you know, if you want to hang out with me on one of the Twitch streams. It's only really a couple of us, but please uh, follow, help me get to 100 followers, and help me get to at least one subscriber on Twitch. Alright, so let's get into some of the skin tones. Now we're going to get right into skin tones. Mm, let's say this brush, let's use this brush. Hey Monique, not clear how to use Twitch yet. Uh, I'm still learning how to use Twitch. Um, I've only been on Twitch for like a week. Uh, so forgive, forgive me again for not knowing too much about the Twitch, the lingo with Twitch or anything. Uh, hey Didi, the world would be severely diminished in, in quality without the arts to inspire us. Uh, to make us feel slash appreciate the many face uh, facets of our lives. This is true. Very, very deep quote there, Dee Dee. So I'm just mixing a little bit of an orangey color. So the um, cadmium yellow deep hue, the Windsor red. And let's just, let's see how this one goes. I'm, I have a feeling it's going to be a little too warm. Possibly a little too warm, so a little more. You're going to notice that I'm going to be jumping from the values. And uh, in terms of values, I've learned something very interesting actually um, from a 
conversation I had on Twitch just like an hour ago, I guess two hours ago now, um, about just sticking with four main values. And I had to think about that a lot because I have, my background is in, in math, my, my degree is in math. And um, so someone told me in the chat um, on Twitch to stick with four main tonalities, uh, the four main tonalities and do the modeling of form with color and to stick with four main tonalities because it makes it easier for the viewer to notice the difference between the values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the values even more simple than I had been doing before. Um, and I, going back to the math, I was wondering because four, only four, the number four for some reason uh, resonated with me. Uh, so th this is where this comes from, actually. Um, I I conjecture. So the um, the person that had followed uh, us and was talking with us on Twitch uh, was anonymous, but I'm pretty sure that this person was um, a a affiliated with one of the ateliers in Florence. Um, now they said that only use four main values and then do the rest of the modeling with edges and with color. And I, I got to thinking the number four, the number four, um, the number four, the four color theorem. So if anybody uh, here has studied math in particular, um, somewhat near graduate level with math or at least um, topology, uh, four color theorem means that in any map you can put in just four colors to fill the map. Just four colors without repetition. So for instance, let, let me show you here to make it m more obvious. So in any section of a map, Im imagine this as a map, any section of a map, you all you need is four colors to fill the map without repetition. So you wouldn't have any repetition within the patterns on the map. And that, that comes from math now. Um, Going back to art, they're, they're intertwined really because it makes sense. Four is the minimal number that you need of colors to color any map without repetition. And if you liken that to painting, one can make the, the comparison that in painting all you need is instead of four colors on a map, four values on a picture to get the major planes to work without repetition. So what happens is you bump into your setup. What happens is if you have four major sections of values in one given space, you can then use the same four sections of values on a different area without the repetition. And then that's what can create the illusion of form. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to be um, simplifying things down in terms of the values that I use. I uh, apologize for that long-winded explanation there. Let's see. Hey, hard job. Yeah, I'm definitely. We'll we'll talk more on, more in the um, in the Instagram messenger about Twitch. Uh, hey, Mad West. I stream for six hours. Uh, six hours um, today. So Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, I stream for six hours because I also streamed this morning I streamed my online class hey Michael uh, so talking about opaque and transparent um, I usually make my lights more opaque um, and my uh, shadows a little bit more transparent I don't know that's just how I do it now here I'm going to start to put in the color for the hair. So I'm going to switch to another brush 
and start to block in the hair. Now I don't want any of I don't want anyone to think that that this is what the painting is ultimately going to look like. Remember, you have to start with something. And I I work general to specific. So there's going to be some viewers out there that are going to look at this and think that this is how the painting is going to look because of the immediacy of the moment or just because I don't know but in any case this is just how I work in terms of building from simple to complex so right now I'm going to be softening this edge Hey David, uh, light bulb moment for values. Definitely, it, uh, again, it, it makes sense because if you come from a, a, a math background, you know, you've always been perplexed with the four color theorem. Like, how can just four colors alone color any size map without repetition? How is that even possible? Um, it's so simple that it's hard to believe. Um, but that comparison can be made to painting in terms of four values. So yeah, definitely light bulb moment there. And again, I don't want anyone thinking that this is how the painting is going to end up looking. I mean, this is the painting at its absolute worst um, and in the beginning this is why a lot of artists don't share the um, early stages of their paintings or any work in progress uh, images at all just because it just you know it's not the most aesthetically appealing thing in the world but I'm trying to show you so that you don't have to have any fear don't be afraid if your painting looks like this in the beginning And don't be afraid if anyone says anything like, oh, what, what are you doing? That looks nothing like the model. Uh, you should give up on everything you're doing, give up on your dreams. And, uh, you know, don't, don't listen to any of that. I'm here to tell you that the beginning of a painting can look like this. And just wait till you see what it'll look like on Saturday. And if you don't trust me, please check out the previous um, virtual painting sessions. Now, I'm not the greatest, obviously, um, far from it. Um, but I do have several years, more than a decade, uh, experience. So I'm telling you from experience that it's okay if you're painting, you know, it, the way it looks in the beginning bothers you. Hey, Sue Williams. Oh, thanks, Michael. Hey, Mad West. Thank you for realizing that I need to start from scratch, like uh, uh, placing shape before details. Details can always be added on top of um, d details can always be added on top of uh, big shapes. Think about it like a building process. You know, like a like a, an engineer constructing uh, some kind of structure you know the, the engineer is not gonna say let me design um, the so suppose you're building a house right you're not gonna start with the welcoming mat in the front of the door you know that that make that would make no sense you would want to start with the foundation the scaffolding because you're building something that's that's going to be structural meant to last What's going on in the comments? <laughs> Do I have to um, take off the comments? For a little while? 
I don't know what's going on with the comments actually. Hmm. You know, um, I will uh, wait and see if one of the <laughs> the moderators um, suggests that I take out the the chat, at least from, you know, there. Hey Joyce, uh, uh, what's going on? I'm doing a live stream and I think they're fighting in the in the comments again, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Um, I'm just painting along. I, um, in particular, I like Painting and drawing, of course, uh, to be a very fun, uh, liberating kind of balance between left brain, right brain kind of thinking. So I'm not over analyzing anything. I'm not measuring, um, as you can clearly see. I'm just painting and reacting to what I'm looking at. And I'm keeping the four color theorem in the back of my mind um, in terms of the values. So we'll, we'll call it the four value theorem. I'm sure it has a name, um, but I'll just call it the four value theorem right now. Meaning all you need is four major values to delineate the planes. And then you do the rest of the modeling with color and with edge. Hey Sue, uh, sorry, I guess that was me. What happened? I don't know what happened. No Siri, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> no, it's just Siri. So what I suggest is to put in as few simple shapes as possible and to know how to work with those shapes. Hey Steven, did anyone bag any art bargains over the weekend? I bought uh, a huge roll of Double oil primed linen. What's up? Double oil primed linen. Fine textured. I cannot wait to get that in the mail um, so I can start some large format paintings. I mean, I'm already working on one large format painting um, of my fiance, but that's on cotton cotton canvas. I can't wait for the oil prime linen. Speaking of sales, um, remember everyone, today and only today, tonight and only tonight, is your chance to purchase two paintings at the same time. So these are two original oil paintings that were created in virtual painting sessions. So if you do purchase the Cyber Monday sale that I have going on only during this stream, you save a total of $155 if you were to purchase the two paintings uh, together. So here is the price for both of the paintings. This is the price for both of the paintings. Again, there are some restaurants that charge more than this for, um, you know, for sushi. So please, please consider it. The prices will go up in the future.
So the i is going to be just a few values. Obviously, it's, it looks too big right now. The i looks too big because we're just blocking in the few values that we're going to use. And a lot of it happens here. A lot of the painting happens here. So if you can get the main triangle to work, you're, you're golden. The main triangle is where most of the work happens. Hey MC Hugh, um, you probably, what is the largest painting you've ever, ever did? And what was it of? Um, largest painting is, actually you've seen it on, it's been on, it's on YouTube. Um, it's called The Explorer. It's a three foot by four foot uh, painting of uh, a, a bearded model posed um, as an explorer looking at a, um, looking at a, a map. There's a globe in it and everything. Although looking at back at it, I'm pretty sure I can paint that a little bit better this time. Hey Julie, um, if anyone's causing you any trouble, let me know in the in the comments. Hey baby Yoda. So instead of trying to put a, a bunch of different values to turn form, I'm actually going to be thinking of it in terms of groups, small groups of four now with each value, which actually simplifies things a lot for me. And again, like I said, the main triangle, this is where everything happens. So that's why I'm putting a lot of effort into the main triangle. But still keeping things simple. I don't know what's going on with the... <laughs> I have no clue what's going on in the comments. It looks like a war again. Oh, man. So, again, please check out my Twitch. Um, 
this, the channel is titled the same, uh, Yupari Artist, except it's Yupari underscore Artist. Uh, main triangle, yes. The two eyes and the nose um, form the main triangle. So here, here, and here. If I can get this section, this little window, correct, I can adjust everything else relative to this little window. And from a practical standpoint, it's just the most difficult area to move things around, um, the eyes and the nose. So if you can get it as correct as possible early on, it saves you a lot of trouble um, further down the road in your painting. So of course her eyebrows are a little bit different than that, but specificity is still not quite uh, a major concern with the uh, eyebrow, but I'm still going to move it a little bit. Hey Steven, this is interesting to look at the stage of the painting. I'm now, I'm now comparing the various unfinished Bouguereau paintings. Uh, so have seen. Uh, hard job. Remove the chat. Uh, so, okay. Oh, hey Kathy. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. Everyone's on their little computer. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm mad at you, so I'm gonna type something mean. I'm mad at you. I'm gonna type something mean. That's what's going on in the comments. I have no clue why that is, but that's how it is sometimes. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Lighten up, everybody. Life is good. We're painting. We're all we're all here. It's a Monday. Monday is an awesome day, and it's Cyber Monday. And um, again, if you're not interested in my paintings, it's all good. I mean, it's still Cyber Monday, something to be looking forward to. Get yourself something on sale. Enjoy the day. 
No need to focus on negativity. <laughs> okay. Um Hey MC Hugh. Oh thank you. So in terms of the coloring, uh, I'm going to be trying to aim to make my colors a little bit cooler. So I'm going in with the raw umber. Let me adjust this angle. And uh, like I said, alkyds are fast drying oil paints. Uh, again, m more research is required on my part now, um, but I do, from my understanding, I have read that alkyds are very archival. The so alkyd itself is a very uh, archival material. So I have trust in the brand, in the brands. Hey Sue. What happened? Hey Raluca, hello you party. I'm drawing for five years and I've recently started some oil paints. The thing is that uh, now I can't afford a medium for those oils. So I use sunflower oil and the paint is not drying. I think because sunflower is not a drying oil, I don't think. Um, so you can get away with not using any medium, uh, from what I heard. Um, you can get away with not using any medium for a while, and it should be fine. But when you do get medium, I always suggest um, you know fast dryers. My favorite medium is Venetian medium, but my most recommended medium to everyone is um, Neo McGill because it's easier to have access to. Hey Kathy, uh, it's a wonderful day with you probably doing two free live streams, uh, demonstrations. Oh, thanks, Kathy. And um, like I always say, uh, these are yeah. Like as Kathy said, they're demonstrations. Actually, she took she said the word for me. They are demonstrations. They're um, but th I mean it's also you're seeing how I create my own paintings. So it's a virtual painting session again where you can interact with me and ask questions and. And hopefully it's fun for you. It might be stressful for some, but it's all good. Um, hey, Mad West. Uh, no, I, I never used the grid method. Hey, Stephen, what I mean is I often look at unfinished paintings and often try to uh, env envision how they would l have looked if they had been finished. So. So much as I saw a Bouguereau study today, 
that is, uh, that I may start. Oh, I see. Hey, MC Hugh, uh, are there any supermarket or hardware store oils that can be used as a medium instead? Uh, I would advise against using um, non-artist grade uh, solvents. You can buy um, linseed oil in the in the store and like the hardware store, but the problem is they're usually more toxic. Um, you can buy very cheap mineral spirits from the hardware store, but the problem is they're very toxic. Um, they're not artist grade. They're not made for artists to use. So I would probably. Uh, avoid using those if possible okay so I think the eyes at least the angle of the eyes should be a little bit off so let me stand back and double check this as if I'm gonna make a correction it better be now And they should be about correct. So before I move any further, I gotta make sure this is correct. This one can move up a little bit. So I'm gonna get that out of the way. So I move the eye up by growing the sclera a little bit, and then I'm going to go with the part underneath. Hello, the end. Uh, wow, wow, awesome username. I really like your username, the end. Um, how long have you been drawing for? Uh, since I've been uh, doing art since 2009. So 11 years, going on 12 years. And I'm not always this slow um, to begin with. I just took a lot longer with the envelope, the beginning of this painting, because it's a little more complex. Here it looks like I've been, you know, haven't, haven't made any progress, but believe me, just getting the shape right is a lot of progress to have in a painting. And now I'm going to move the lower eyelid up. And remember you can always add as many details as you want later, but the hard part is the basics. The basic is the hard part. Okay, so that should fix the angle somewhat there. Um, and again, for me, an angle is from tear duct to tear duct. Um, just run a straight line from tear duct to tear duct and compare it to the horizontal, or to a horizontal. And uh, yeah, the, the shape of the eyes, I'm not too concerned about. It's the angle and the placement of the eyes that I'm 
putting a little bit more uh, focus on. But but yeah, I'll get to the specifics of the of the eyes a little bit later. So when I mean when I, when I say focusing a lot on the main triangle, it means the placement of everything relative to one another, not the shape of the eye or anything like that. I accept that it's not going to be uh, correct at, in, at first. Okay, so now I can move down towards the nose. So now I have the distance between the eyes about correct, the angle of the eye is about correct, um, the positioning of the hairline to the eyebrow down to the nose about correct. Now, not really. This has to be lowered a, lot, a tiny bit. And I'm not making that decision by measuring it. I'm just uh, standing back, or sitting back actually, and just uh, double checking from a distance. And painting is one of those few things where appearances is everything. Because it is all about appearances. Um, especially when what you're, what you're creating is an illusion. Of course there's a materials aspect that goes into it as well. But yeah, I had to move the hairline down. And what will probably help is if I start to put in the glow of the background just a, just adjacent to the hair and believe me that's going to be a fun thing to do check this out gonna get the glow around the hair with just a single value to begin with and this is the lightest value that will be in this painting as someone was um, mentioning to me before uh, keeping the values organized in say a group of four makes things so much easier so that's going to be the mean value for that so that's like one this is going to be around two this is going to be three and then four is obviously going to be here so keeping it that simple hey Kevin and a little hello there And I'm going to use, I'm going to let the tone of the panel be the value that I need for it, basically anything I can get away with it being the value. So anything I can get away with in terms of letting the tone of the panel do some of the work, that's what I'll do.
Hey Steven, my favorite brush to use are Filbert's, uh, the red Japanese synthetic, although uh, to the Rembrandt study uh, I, st I stuck to round brushes only. What's everyone else's favorite brush? It's a good question. What is everyone else's favorite brush? Hey Jason, who was born, a nice username. Filberts and Rounds, both natural and synthetics. I, I really enjoy um, Filberts and Rounds as well. But um, I like flat brushes as well. So let's see what everyone's uh, preference is. So I'm going to be keeping the value range very, very compressed. Rigger brushes, those are really nice. Dagger brushes, awesome. But yeah, I tend to almost always use round synthetics, as you're seeing here. And by the way, I'll mention this from time to time. Um, hey, Helen. Um, so I'll mention this from time to time. Um, we do have a lot more stuff available on the Etsy. So for instance, if you are interested um, in a... There it is. So if you're interested in a sticker, we have a new type of sticker available. We already had uh, some more stickers. Now we have stickers with the paintings on the easel. So for instance, this one was just painted. Um, last time. So we have the painting. It's a miniature painting on an easel. And we also have a sale with the stickers, if you want to check those out, on the Etsy. Now her cheekbone is a, uh, a little bit wider here, so I put in a little bit more of a shape there. I'm probably going to have to cut back into here, uh, especially for that edge next time. Or actually. Let's just do that now.
So just four main values and everything else is just edge. So this is just edge. I'm not trying to adjust, excuse me, adjust the value. I'm trying to blend the edge. And that makes it so much more simple. So much more simple. So as you can see, there's kind of an organization of values from lightest to darkest on the palette. In the past, I used to pre-mix that um, before getting into skin tones. Now it's just kind of instinctual. So I'm thinking of those um, value organizations. So this would be two, and this would be one. This would be three, and then the darkest dark would be four. And I can use the same values in different sections without repetition, just like I mentioned with the four color theorem. So to make that even more clear, so imagine again a map, right? So you have, uh, suppose you have like Maryland, DC, uh, Virginia, Pennsylvania, uh, West Virginia. You have five states. You have one, say, rectangle. You can use just, again, those five, but then you can add as many as you want and only using four colors, you can fill in the map without, say, Maryland, the same color of Maryland touching the same color for, for Virginia. They would be different because of how the geometry works out. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got a question here. Hey Jamie, um, what are your thoughts on Lucian Freud and would you do a master study of his? Uh, he's a great expressionist, I want to say ex expressionist painter. Um, I, the last expressionistic style painting that I did um, a, a study of on, on YouTube was a, a Van Gogh. I don't know if I would do one, maybe that could be a Twitch thing, um, because here I'm trying to create paintings that are, you know, my own paintings. For more master studies and uh, projects like that, it's those are mainly now geared towards the uh, online classes.
on Patreon. I'm sorry if you can hear uh, the chihuahua barking in the background. So again, remember I'm not using any medium, just the paint itself. And remember these are um, fast dryers. These are Alkid oil paints. The Alkid is uh, mixed into the oil paint already. So I prefer to do that than to say add medium to the paint. Um, that way with the Alkid oil paints I know that it's a uh, homogeneous mixture. So I, I know that one, say one clump of paint doesn't have more alkyd in it than another. So each section that I move in, I'm going to be putting about four different values. And it's, it's, it's a funny thing that you can do that without repeating, necessarily repeating and then flattening out the, the form. But again, this is a, only a start. This is the worst it's going to be. So I may have used a little too much Gamsol, so I used Gamsol to thin, thin out the paint, um, but that, that was a mistake. Yep, yeah, that was a mistake. So I'm going to have to add more opaque paint there. And I need to move quickly 
as we still have a mouth to paint, or not a mouth, well obviously a mouth, but a hand to block in with color. Him, uh, Mr. Stark, I don't feel good, this painting is going to be epic. I, uh, I hope so. I, I hope so. Um, it's definitely a very, very difficult challenge. Um, I knew from the beginning that this would be a very difficult one, so I anticipated that um, by spending much longer with the envelope. Uh, so thank you for that, Mr. Stark. Hey Sue, perhaps you should lay down until you feel better? Huh? I feel okay. I think you mean someone else. Cooler colors in the forehead. Oh yeah, the colors are all kinds of off. Um, I'm going to be adjusting the colors um, next time. The the idea was to, so for instance here, like try to get the effect of light right away. But I understand that the color is going to have to be adjusted. There we go, now we have some of those bright lights there. Hey Steven, all my paintings are difficult. I wouldn't be satisfied if they were easy. That's true. One possibility I see I is painting with a... Is that the one you want? No, Siri. Oh, Siri with her attitude. Actually, I'm the one with the attitude. Siri keeps interrupting me. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of these paintings are a challenge. It's just this pose in particular. Uh, it was a little bit more daunting. Hey, Waro Waro. Hey, Sue, Mr. Stark said it doesn't, doesn't feel well. Uh-oh. Anthony Edwards I Stark was... is a fictional character. Oh, my good... Me... No, Siri. <laughs> The heck? Alright, now we can get to the mouth. And clearly I had the mouth placed uh, incorrectly. So I will be fixing that. She starts when you say when I say your name. Okay, okay. If I say Stephen, does does she? Hmm. No, she didn't do anything. It's like she has a mind of her own, which she probably does at this point. I'm sure machine learning has already reached consciousness, but they're not telling us. Great. Then I used too much Gamsol again. So if you use too much Gamsol, that's fine. Just mix more paint. So I want to get uh, kind of like a off purplish color for the mouth.
So I'm using the upper lip to move this whole structure up a little bit. Yes, I know, it's going to look goofy for some time. Let's see. I'm trying to read the question in Spanish, so from Jesus Manuel. Uh, thank you, Arita. Usted está pintando con oleo uh, adelgazado en la primera mancha verde. Um, it is. Hmm. I'm not using any medium, and I think you mean the thinness of the uh, the paint. A little bit of Gamsol has gone into this, but. I, I will admit it was too much, it was a mistake. Uh, so I wanted it to be more uh, opaque than it is right now. I'm sorry, explaining that in Spanish would have been beyond the scope of my understanding. In Spanish. You like the Oxazine purple, Ingrid? I like, um... Ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson for purple. Well, this is kind of like a off purple, so it has a little bit of uh, the winsa red in it. And yes, I know, that's off. Hey Helen, oh, I'm glad you're liking this, this painting already. Okay, I should be switching brushes for that. Uh, so I'm going to have a brush for the value of the color of the lips. And then um, another brush for the surrounding skin tones. I'm just pushing the shape up because I know that the shape is wrong so I'm trying to adjust it and paint the surrounding shapes at the same time. Let's just use the skin tone color for the light of the lips.
remember with alkids you want to clean off your brushes more frequently with the solvent. I think I know what it is. My paper towel is overly saturated with um, Gamsol. I think the paper towel was adding solvent to the brush when I was trying to take the solvent off the brush. Can you look for us uh, stories? Uh, thank you, I'm glad you like the color variations. Okay, so now that we have the mouth somewhat situated there, um, I'm going to sit back once again and double check. So we're getting there. But it's still going to be taking a while to get there. Um, hey, Dr. Harris, can I use student grade as an underpainting. Um, in general, the prices between artist grade and student grade shouldn't vary that much. It's it's the cadmiums uh, that are the most expensive um, with artist grade. Um, I wouldn't recommend using student grade, but um, you know, you can experiment with it, certainly, I'd say. Okay, so that's about good for the placement of the mouth. Uh, I'll respond to you uh, once I once the stream ends. Okay, so. Let's see. Hey, Erwick. Uh, saludos desde aquí en Beltsville, Maryland. I'm glad you like the color. Uh, hey, Jesus. Esta uh, 
está adelgazada al, uh, adelgazada a la primera uh, pintura a la prima o dejará secar I'm going to keep working on this a la prima and then of course um, a la prima means wet on wet but I'm going to be building this painting more on Wednesday ultimately what I want to get out of this is the effect of light I want the light effect Here, uh, are we, si puedo hablar un poquito, pero solo un poquito, meaning I can barely speak Spanish at all. I can understand it, um, if someone speaks it to me, I, I know it through my grandparents, but my family is from Peru. Of course, I was born and raised in Maryland. I'm 29. 29. Uh, I'm sorry about the language barrier there. Hey, Dr. Harris, I find acrylics difficult to handle and too fast drawing. Um, I typically say that acrylic. You know, acrylic painters will say that acrylic painting will say that acrylic painting is easier for them, uh, and oil painters will say that oil painting is easier for them. So it's really what you're used to using. And yep, uh, once in a while you'll see our link there for my online classes. So again, my online classes begin at $10 a month. Gets you access to all of the online lessons, the pre-recorded videos. So here is again, it's titled the online class slash mentor tier. It's $10 a month. Gets you access to um, the pre-recorded lessons. Also, you can send me images weekly for virtual classroom. If you look up patreon.com slash your artist. If you're wondering what the difference between my online classes and this is, is that in the online classes you can send me images each week uh, for the virtual classroom, which is a pre-recorded video where I give everyone advice on their painting projects. Also, the online classes are designed for anyone of any skill level to enter and the online classes are building up sequentially 
to the point where students will be able to do larger format painting. So paintings, um, you know, like this, beyond head and shoulders, like full, full figure portrait painting. Okay, that's a little bit beyond my capabilities at the moment. Um, let's see if I can get something from it. Uh, okay, that, that's, I'm sorry, that's beyond my very minimalistic understanding of Spanish. Hey Steven, what's the next subject of painting for the next online class? Have you decided? Uh, well, we're going to be finishing. Okay. Oh my. I found this on the oh web my for goodness. What's the next subject of painting no. for the next online class? No. Check it out. No, I'm good. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, with Siri. Why is that? Every time I say your name, uh, it's not every time. Obviously, last time I said your name and that didn't happen, but I don't know. I don't know. Um. So we're going to, there's multiple things going on in the online classes, so we introduced Ala Prima. Um, we uh, are going to introduce the next portion of practical figure drawing soon. So we have the next addition to practical figure drawing, which is going to be uh, technical block-ins. Uh, we have the Rembrandt master study that's going to be finished soon uh, and we have project four so many options and in terms of the next project we have to decide on the next master study that's that's going to be up for uh, group decision I'm going to create a, uh, a a poll on patreon so everyone can choose which artist they would like me to to uh, do the next master study of. And again, everyone, um, the online classes are designed so you can take them at your own pace. So for instance, just because I'm moving on from one project to another, doesn't mean that you can't uh, start with the first project. Angela, she's looking right at, right at us. I remember the lady with the pearl earring. You know, I think, I thought the same thing actually, Angela. Um, the turn of the head, very similar to that of the pearl earring. And she has an earring, so that, that kind of makes sense. Maybe, maybe we'll title this something along the line of something to do with the earring and the lighting. I don't think I'll put the earring in this time. I'll put that in uh, the next time. This, uh, the likeness, that's all going to be adjusted um, a lot next time. Right now I'm just trying to get the color and the light. More, more so the, the light, the effect of light. And of course, ooh, the hand. All right, let's get to the hand now. Hey Steven, yep, I got your your image for the for the pumpkin. Looks great. Uh, it will be in the uh, up and coming virtual classroom.
Marshall, I want to do a, a Michelangelo project. Problem is a block of marble is too expensive. That's true. And David, girl with the missing earring. <laughs> I'm going to put the earring in, don't worry. It's just probably not anytime soon. Hey Leo, if you had materials, would you ever attempt a fresco style painting? Maybe. Um, something that's that size would be pretty epic to do. So that blue light, does everyone see, oh actually, yeah, there's like a kind of, kind of like a blue, bright blue stream of light there, and yes, I finally have Thalo Blue. Uh, this will not be used a lot, so uh, when we get to this light over here, that's why I took this off, so I, once I get there I'm going to put the light, once we get there we're going to have the brightest blue color, one of the brightest blue colors possible with the help of Thalo Blue. Coming soon to a stream near you. Hey, someone saying, do you always begin with a uh, warm base as the underpainting or at times do you go with a cooler color? Sometimes I go with a cooler color, uh, but usually I stick with the warmer one. And remember, this is going to look its worst um, at the current moment. It's only going to continue to progress, hopefully. The most important thing is to see it for its simple shapes. And I know I say it a lot, but that's the hardest thing. To grasp. That's the most difficult concept to grasp. But once you learn how to see in terms of simple shapes, it makes everything so much simpler and less stressful. Oh, thanks for the heart. Uh, let's see. Yep, I have been busy. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I got a question from someone saying, okay, good, good, good. I like your username. Do you always begin with a warm base? Okay, um, yep. Sometimes I use a cooler, so like a gray, a neutral gray, but um, I have to, oftentimes I like to use this raw umber tone. It's just my favorite uh, tone to use.
AMC Q, uh, is, is this is the worst than, oh, okay. Oh yeah, something looks different, definitely. A lot looks different. Uh, this painting is actually kind of giving me anxiety because I, I thought that I was going to be able to move a little faster than this. But I found that, yeah, all of this is, see, this is just way too sharp, this angle. There's a whole, a lot of stuff. The only thing that is at all correct is the axes of the eyes, the distance between the eyes and the nose, and the positioning of the mouth. The outside shape needs some work. I'm going to definitely go into the outside shape. But since we have a hand in here, um, it's going to complicate things a little bit. So I have to be careful not to mess up the hands too too badly. Or the hand, sorry. And um, there are some blue ref uh, kind of reflected lights, ambient lights there. Uh, that's going to be added in the next layer. I don't want to mix those bright blue colors with the uh, base that we have here for the skin tones. Yo pinto con ATL, pero no me sale igual. Um, Alkid. Um, let me see. I think that's what ATL means. Whew! So I think that the hand is is uh, finally in the relative correct place. Okay, so it looks like we have an order for a sticker also. Let me double check. Ooh, I wonder which stickers it was. Hold on a second. Ooh, awesome. So we got an order for the uh, stickers that I was just demonstrating here, so the canvas on the easel. Um, I find these to be really, um, really neat looking. Uh, so awesome. Alright. Let, let me, let me figure out. Hey Monique, you did what I thought you would do. What did I do? Yeah, this hand is giving me anxiety. Um, so, I'm trying to put in the shape for the wrist bone, but it's too straight. All of this in general is too straight. So let's see what we can do. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spend forever on it because I'm going to end up, uh, I don't know what the word is, cowling in fear of the uh, hand. So 
So now I'm just going to cover this quickly. Uh, and then I'm going to put in the background. And then this should look a little bit better. Hey, Monique, on the hand. I messed it up, you mean? <laughs> right, so here's the clavicle. of course use the palette knife to put in this glow uh, I fixed the hand oh oh yeah that, it's still all kinds of off um, but it'll, it'll get there at some point And of course this light won't appear very light until we have kind of a, a neutral color in between. So I'm going to just sandwich that color in with the ultramarine blue. And um, yeah, so something's gonna have to be adjusted here. Hey, when you saw a dark mess under the chin, and now I see part of the fingers as I should. This is all a mess to me. Like this is a very big mess. Um, and uh, it's just because I chose to start it with Ala Prima. I knew I shouldn't have, but I did anyway just because of the speed. Faster is not always better, so that was my mistake. I just ended up making this much more complicated for myself. tool I don't know but if anyone remembers warmth I struggled really bad with the start of that one and we were able to move beyond that really difficult portion uh, which was mainly in the beginning um, and we even managed to sell that one so you know, we'll see what the future holds for this one. The dark underneath the eye is just bothering me. for me. Oh, thank you. And um, tell you what, like smooth, uh, smooth skin is actually harder to paint than. Um, so, for instance, uh, harder to paint and harder to draw. For instance, before this, earlier today, I was drawing a Rembrandt, 
uh, study, a Rembrandt sketch, in charcoal, um, just at uh, 2 p.m. today, 2 p.m. till like 4.30 actually, um, I was drawing a Rembrandt with charcoal and it was, uh, it was less, I, I want to say, I don't want to say it was easier, but because I didn't, of course, take it to the level that this one's going to be taken to, but it's much easier to block in um, if it's not super smooth. Okay, so let's. Okay, so that. Sure. In general, I run the risk of making this length too short, so I have to be careful with that. So I'm going to put the uh, light over here a little bit warmer and then in the next layer we're going to go over it with spots of blue. And I left this still in the raw umber, so I'll be able to actually add in the earring before the stream ends. Hey Angela, what did you mean about uh, super smooth? So in general, it's not always the case, but in general, smooth skin, like she's what, like. I don't know, she's like 22 or like, I don't know, like 20 to 23 or something like that. Uh, smooth skin is a little harder to, to, uh, to draw and to paint, in my opinion. That could vary. So I'm going to use a tad bit of the Gamsol to get the paint to move a little faster. I don't want to use any medium just yet with this layer. Yeah, no problem, Angela. on the shoulders and again remember everyone if this is too uh, late for you wherever you are if it's like getting close to one in the morning or something like that where you are please check out the twitch that I stream uh, the twitch stream is the same days that I stream here on YouTube Monday Wednesday Saturday but instead of being at 530 the twitch streams are from 2 o'clock p.m to 4 o'clock p.m. and please please check out my twitch um, channel and help me get to 100 followers and help me get at least one subscriber
Hey, Julie. Oh, wow. 1.13 a.m. over there. Hey, Alma. Muchas gracias. Te mando saludos desde aquí en Beltsville. Beltsville, Maryland. Oh wow, one ten in the morning. So yeah, definitely please check out my uh, Twitch account, my Twitch channel. Hey Tool, uh, Tool you've been awake studying for two, uh, for two days. Oh wow. So again, please don't forget everyone that I have a uh, Black, or not Black Friday, uh, Cyber Monday. I have a Cyber Monday sale going on at the moment where you can buy two paintings at the same time and save a total of $155. The sale is only valid during the stream. So if the you know if the paintings are not sold uh, during the Cyber Monday sale, no worries. The paintings will still be available on Etsy and can be purchased separately. See, that's just too rigid, so I'm gonna soften there. Hey, Tis Gloria. Um, oh, thank you. So now the dark of the dress, the dark of the hair. Before I forget, um, we're gonna put in the earring.
it so it's no longer a uh, girl with the missing earring. Now we're starting to add the earring. And uh, this is just my first guess at the earring. It's, it's going to get more refined later. And I'm probably going to end up painting right over this at some point. But we'll see. Oh, uh, take care, Mariah. I didn't even count how many dots there are there. I'll address that later. Okay. Now for the fun part. So I'm going to start to put in the uh, dark valleys for the hair and then we're going to get it the glow, that nice glow. Now the fun part begins. So I'm going to use a little bit of solvent to thin out the paint. Not very much. Hey, MC Hugh. Thanks for sticking with us. a little more solvent. So I used a little bit of the raw umber in the, the dark here just so it's not straight ivory black. And now the fun is going to begin. Let me just make sure to clean the brush. I do not want the paint to dry on my favorite brush. See that would be a crime. I let the paint dry on my favorite brush. Hey tool. Bye everyone. Only have half an hour left on left for my exam. Best of luck to you. Not that you need it. I know that you studied very hard. A tool. Thanks for joining us. Alright. Now let's put in some glow glow in the painting because we want the light, the effect of light. So start with an orange. We're going to paint the fire. A fiery red orangey color. It's kind of a light pink, actually, out here.
And of course it's not going to look bright unless there's a darker value next to it. Um, so the nice thing about palette knife is you can clean it easily and clean palette knife. So I'm going to go with that kind of bluish uh, kind of hazy color in the background. Oh, now that's not correct. Let's put this one. I don't care. Let's just mix right on here. And I think I'm going to put some of those details um, that you're seeing from the in, in the photo reference. I might explore some of those. Fun has begun. Oh, look at that. We got a super chat. Hey, Franklin C. Thank you so much for the super chat. So, shout out to you, uh, Franklin. So thank you so much, Franklin. Thank you so much, Franklin C., for your super chat. Thank you so much for your support on my YouTube channel. It means so much to me. Uh, again, this is a lot of work, and um, thank you so much for uh, supporting the channel. Um, I hope that you're enjoying the virtual painting sessions. Again, thank you so much. Hey, uh, Jesus. Uh, okay, take care. I uh, thanks, Aura Russell. Oh, and you know what? Let's go. Let's go and put some lights. Boom. So we're going to have a big bright light over here. And with a little bit of a bluish tint. A little bluish tint, that's all. Oh, and this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun, I'm telling you. Even the palette knife is happy. I'll fix the face later, don't worry about it. Um, as long as we have the effect of light, the composition that we like, we're set. We're in a good place um, for, for Wednesday. right um, so please don't forget about the uh, paintings that we have for sale for the Cyber Monday sale you can buy two paintings at once and save a total of 155 and I also have stickers available in, in my Etsy shop putting in all the fire. Hey David, I'm glad that the background is worth waiting. Man, I cannot wait to... I can't wait to see what all of these these lights will look like. Especially with all of that ambience that we're going to have in the background. Now that kind of grayed out, so I'm going to have to clean the brush a little, the brush really, or the palette knife. <laughs> the painting is on fire. <laughs> Thanks. Funny.
And just like before, I'll put in all the details later. And in fact, I think the details probably won't even be in there until uh, uh, maybe when we finish this painting on, on Saturday. And let's put in this bluish color. And I've run out of titanium white. So the bluish color here for the buildings. Okay, so where is my, there it is, missing my paint color. So I'm going to see if I can punch it even brighter. So it's even less of the even less of the um, cadmium yellow. Oh, and we can a little lighter. The only drawback with palette knife is you use a lot of paint, but um, Alkid, luckily for me, is not too expensive. So as you're seeing, I'm kind of mixing on the on the panel. So again, I'm kind of spinning the palette knife as you're seeing here, just to get some texture in the background.
I definitely need to put out a little more paint. Um, so yep, yeah, since the chat has slowed down a little bit, I'm going to add a crowd question. So the crowd question is, if you could guess how many portrait paintings you have created in your lifetime, and it's okay if the answer is zero, uh, let us know. I'm going to write my answer. My best guess of how many portrait paintings I've, I've created, my best guess is 2,500 portrait paintings, of which only a couple of them survived. And Marshall, four. It's a good answer. Stephen, 52. BBM 1, Harjot 15, MC Hugh 5. Hey Franklin, see how do the first portraits come out? Me? It was terrible. Uh, my first one, I destroyed it. Um, my first one was of uh, my mom sat for me for a portrait painting, um, and it was just awful. She hated it too. So, <laughs> my first portrait painting was horrible. And it no longer exists. It's even about 20 in progress. Oh well. It does do that every time I say that, huh? Meh. <laughs> Pretty funny. So this section here is lacking a little bit in brightness. And I think it's this value taking away from it, so I'm going to edit the picture a little bit. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that you like the uh, stream. So yeah, I'm editing this this light. It, it doesn't make sense. Uh, it takes away from the illusion of form. See that? It's weird, isn't it? how making this darker pushes the light a little more. It's weird how that works.
Angela, you painted eight. Uh, Steven, my first self-portrait was so hideous I've hidden it from myself. I know the feeling about, um, you know, paintings that, yeah, like, like I said, I, I've been known to destroy uh, a lot of my paintings. You know, if I'm not gonna, if I don't think I'm gonna sell them or exhibit them, uh, then I just, just paint over them or destroy them altogether. Hey, Hard Jack, uh, question. How many canvases do you buy a year? Uh, I don't really buy individual canvases um, anymore. I used to. But if I did, I would I would be, like, super broke. Like, uh, what I do is I buy large rolls of canvas and stretch my own. Or panels and prepare the panels. But I don't buy individual canvases. I haven't in a while, actually. Well, that was a mistake. So a little bit of ultramarine blue got in the mix. Oh, it's alright, it's just one big healthy uh, mess of colors for the background. Which is, which is fun. It adds um, intrigue, I think. Hey Marshall, I gave them away to various friends. Kathy, only six portrait paintings, wow. Um, definitely, you've learned so much in my online classes. Wow. Hey Steven, I buy 50 at a time, 16 by 20 inches. It's a lot cheaper buying this way. Um, that's true. It's a good way to save on Uh, if you're going to be buying individual canvases. And I did say that I would use Thalo Blue for this light, so uh, get ready for it. Let's see. I haven't used Thalo Blue in forever, so... And it's not going to be used in the skin tones. It's going to be used for the rim lighting. Drum roll. Get ready for Thalo Blue. Mm, let's see. What's going to happen? What is the Thalo Blue like with Griffin Alkid? Only a tiny bit because that right there is volatile. If that gets into the skin tones, forget it. That's like nuking the skin tones if you're going with Thalo Blue in the skin tones. Only a tiny bit. Whoa, that's a super bright blue. Whoa, look at that blue. Wow. Now that's Thalo Blue. But whatever you do, don't mix Thalo Blue in your skin tones or you risk nuking the skin tones.
see, I'm trying to get a thin little roll of paint here. Do you see this? Thin little roll of paint for the rim lighting. Whoo, that's bright. That's bright. That's so bright. My goodness. Um, so yeah, a light that bright is very, very uh, fun to paint. Now clearly, as I said, getting the phthalo blue in the skin tones risks nuking the skin tones. I accidentally put it into the shape there and I'm not even going to try to fix it. That's, that's just going to be. And I'll fix that later once this dries. I Steven even used Thalo Blue today. Yeah, Thalo Blue is definitely a little risky. Oh, that's a good question. So Luke uh, is asking everyone, what scenes do you like to paint the most? So, uh, crowd question from Luke. What scenes do you like to paint the most? I want to say, if we're talking about scenery, uh, currently rim lighting. Um, so lighting uh, behind, um, so sunlight behind. Uh, this is currently my favorite type of scene, or my favorite type of uh, lighting to paint. Uh, let's see. Hey, Kathy, uh, you mean the charcoal sketch after Velasquez? Which one was... Hmm. No, today was a Rembrandt. Um, last time was the Velasquez. Light on water. Oh, Kathy, I meant your work in, in general, like you've learned so much. I didn't realize how colorful the background would end up being in this painting. But I've definitely, I think I've just taken out a lot of my stress from the, uh, you know, the drawing onto the background. <laughs> Whether it'll pan out, we'll see. Anger, Thalo Blue is a strong opaque color. It's a very strong color. It puts everything in a chokehold. Alright, so let's go ahead and fill out the rest of the background and put this off to the side to 
So let it dry, which will take almost no time at all because alkyd. Um, so now that we have these big colors, of course the drawing is going to be uh, adjusted um, next time. The biggest thing was really to get the effect of light and something that feels like it has a future to it. You don't want to answer all the questions in the beginning. This is only the very beginning of this painting. Alright, let's use some of the thalo blue in the background here. We're going to have to blend this blue out anyway. And there's still a little bit of kind of like a bright I want to say like a bright uh, light color raking around here. So raking light. Uh, actually raking light goes this way, but you'll see what I mean. And yes, the blue is out of place, in case anyone's wondering. I'm going to paint into the blue uh, next time. That blue is treacherous. If I, if I do anything to get that blue into the skin tones, forget it. But don't take my word for it if, uh, if you don't want to. Definitely experiment. I always recommend everyone experiment until they find what works best for them. Okay, Stephen, I often add a little orange to the blue to tone it down. This is true. I just wanted this to be like the super brightest blue. But you know what I can do? is take the palette knife by itself and actually subtract some of it and then get your paper towel because all I wanted was this rim light of blue and just subtract the blue that I don't want because all I wanted was a tiny glimpse of the blue Angela, oh, I'm glad that you like the the, the back lighting. Thank you. There we go. That actually did the trick. So, yep, yeah, like I said, I recommend experimenting. So you find what works best for you. I'm just adjusting the edge of the hairline there.
Well, Julie, I'm glad that the background uh, really helps with the light. I mean, especially if you, um, you know, if you're nearsighted like I am. So it it makes sense for me to take off my glasses. Then I can really see that the the light is starting to work. I can see that I can make the blue a little lighter, but I'm not gonna mess with that. that that's something for for next time. Now I'm just going to be adding little traces of the orange in there. So like I said, composition and lighting. That's those are the two huge things. And I don't know, let's let's see what this looks like if I put random light in here like you're seeing in the picture. Experiment. Doesn't have to make sense. This is clearly a light, I don't know, this is like a bouncing light on some kind of building. I don't know what it's doing there, but I'm going to paint these lights as I see them. And if I don't like them, I'll take them out. And the more I can get done um, in terms of placing abstract shapes that add to the composition, the better. Doesn't have to make sense. Yep, let's go in with the Taylor Blue. Whatever. Let's do it. And if it doesn't work, no problem. You can easily take it out. And you know this section's a little bit more green, so let's use the yellow and the tail of blue. But I think we're almost almost done with the tonight's stream. Just started portraits only. Oh wow, you you just started. To, wow, everyone's doing so great. Yep. And if you don't like it, that's not my problem. Sorry about that, buddy. Alright, so almost there. I think what I'm going to do is just take some of the uh, rough impasto 
and kind of just flatten it down a little bit. Oh, don't worry <laughs> don't worry about it Ingrid it's not it's not worth the time it takes to type for that no worries Ingrid so I'm just gonna start flattening out again and adding a little bit of of the red there but really I should just be flattening this Hey Luke, also I wanted to start out on portraits, but I'm unsure which brushes and paint I want to buy. I'll figure it out though. Um, I uh, I suggest Filberts um, to begin with. They're just they're just a good like um, I don't know like a all around brush. And yes, I do have. Um, some brushes linked in the description box. Alright, so that should be good. Um, I flattened out the texture. Of course, the effect of light is what I wanted, and then I can go back and refine all of this on Wednesday. So that should be good. As usual, I'm going to be cleaning off the brushes so I'm going to start cleaning off the brushes and cleaning off the palette this is going to be kind of like our dedicated questions and answers time so please feel free to ask me any questions that you may have the Black Friday sale is not Black Friday the Cyber Monday sale is still going on uh, if you want to purchase two paintings and save $155 um, but it's all good I uh, just want to clean off the brushes and always be careful with alkids and your brushes. Uh, alkids are not as friendly with your brushes because they dry so fast. Okay. So yeah, I've left a lot of work for myself um, for Wednesday. So Wednesday will be kind of like the, the fine tuning of all this. Hey, uh, Shadia Art. Oh, thank you. MC Hugh, uh, good night. We'll see you on Wednesday. 
And there we go, getting paint on my finger. Alrighty, the palette is clean. Hey Luke, uh, thank you for the stream and I hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great day as well. Yep, uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed this stream, Angela. Alright, so that being said, that should be about it for today's stream. Thank you so much everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. I wish you the very best in all of your artwork. And as I always say, I'm going to be back um, on Wednesday to continue this painting. So remember, I'm um, streaming 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And on the same day, 2 o'clock p.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. on my Twitch channel. And that's mainly drawing, so charcoal sketches. So I mainly do a lot of charcoal sketching on the Twitch channel. So please uh, check out the Twitch channel. And um, also I have links in the description box to my online classes. Let me just double check the bottom of the... Nah, it's fine. Alrighty, so that being said, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I wish you the very best in all of your artwork. And I will see you on the next one.